Okay, so um, another escape math you can do is mermaid escape or hydraulic escape. So again, if I'm on mount, more than likely he'll get my hands on the mat. He'll make wedges at my hips and then just a bump and he'll bring his knees in and he can sit up and start playing his butterfly guard and all that stuff. Okay. So we're going to counter that with a head and arm choke and then we're just going to um, Henry Aiken's details on finishing it. The minute his hands go on my hips, first thing I'm thinking about is just lifting my knees off the mat. So when, I, when he tries to bump, it just makes it a wee bit harder and it gives me time. Again, I can choose either side. Um, I'll start to hug the head and I'll just bring my hand inside. From this position now, if Matthew does nothing, I'm just walking that forward and getting to the head and arm. But that's unrealistic. Um, he's going to be clamping his elbow to his body. So the first thing I'm thinking about is turning um, the underhook hand towards his head. Now, as he puts pressure on, all I do is I put the weight on that underhook hand and I just elevate my elbow off the mat. Now I'll know. He'll want to just like swim inside quickly, bump that as he wants. So the minute I do that, I just fill this base again. So it's that, and then I drop down. It's that, and then I drop down. Again, once I walk it past his head and recede back, the next battle is Matthew tucks his chin, and this is where a lot of people mess up. So my hand, the cross face hand, is just going to grab three fingers into this armpit. I'm going to recede my weight back. Yeah, and then I'm going to start to drive my left shoulder. It's not driving down to the mat. It's actually driving at an angle towards my left hand to cut off his right jugular. So I'm moving in this direction at 45 degrees. Now I've cut off his right jugular. I'm using my free hand as base. I start to push um, his left shoulder into his left jugular by starting to turn the corner. I'm bringing my left ear. Matthew's left here. So again, one more time on that. So the minute he gets my hands on the mat, I just lift my knees. That just gives me a second. Now I can pick a side. The minute I win the underhook and I start to um, hug his head, another thing Matthew can do is immediately start to bridge. So I just turn my hip, that lizard walk we covered in the Mark Dorn system. For him to bridge me off, he needs to raise his right hip. And again, while he's trying to bridge, I'm already starting to walk that arm up. Once I get it above his head, receding my way back again, get that three finger grip in the armpit, and I bring my way back, and now it's about coming in at an angle towards the hand that's cupped his armpit. I wanna cut off his right jugular first, and then I start to turn the corner, and use his shoulder to cut off his left jugular. Big mistake people make from this position is they don't concentrate on where their head is. They're too high with their head. Then Matthew makes a frame. Yeah, and now you can push in my head in that direction and start to get his head out. Perfect. So if he makes the frame now, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Or if he answers the telephone, and I'm here, and then I'm trying to do all that stuff, doesn't really work. My head needs to be low. I need to be connected at him. So again, I'm just filling the space of his jugulars. I'm turning the corner. We don't really want to bail the side control. The problem with that is there's more things Matthew can do. So if we want to try and finish from the mount with connections, and again, this is Henry Aiken's one-handed version. So your right hand is free, the base on the mount.